Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Survival Games mini-series. In this episode, we're going to write the code um, for filling the chests when the game begins. Before we start with the code, I just want to let you know where we stand as far as the videos. We're uh, beginning to come to a close on the Survival Games mini-series. Um, after this episode, I'm certainly, I'm definitely going to do a video um, that re that, uh, you know fixes the um, spawns because there are a lot of issues with it right now. Like if there are three players and one person joins, there's a gap uh, that would not be filled, and also um, there is a possibility of overlapping players where two people could be put in the same spawn. So I'm definitely going to uh, fix that in a video. Um, I'm also if I can get a um, regeneration system working. I'm going to work on it a little bit. I could do a video showing block regeneration that would allow the players to destroy blocks in the arena and then they would automatically uh, regenerate at the end of the game. And I think that was it. There might have been one other video that I know I'm going to do in this series, but then at the end um, we're going to do a live stream debugging uh, so I'm going to get a server, and I'm going to live stream uh, where I put the plugin on the server, we play through, and then once I encounter an error, uh, I go look through the code to try to find where the error is and fix it, and then um, anyone who's watching the stream is welcome to join the server uh, and play the game to help with the debugging. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. In this video, as I quickly stated earlier, we're going to um, fill the chests. So we already wrote the system for associating chests with an arena, and then here's the part where it loads in all of the chests. But now we're going to have it so that when the countdown is over and the match begins, all of the chests will be filled uh, with random items. And that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write a um, public void start. This start method is going to be called over in the countdown class where we do arena.setState to be started. Instead of doing that, we're going to call the start method because this in the start method is where we're going to fill the chests. Now we can actually delete this setState method because it's no longer necessary. Um, and also we don't want to allow the state to be changed outside of the arena class or else that could mess it up if the state is changed to be waiting in the middle of a game then more people could join and we don't want that to happen but anyways in the start met method the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say this dot state is equal to arena state dot started so we of course still need to update the state which we did before in countdown but now in countdown uh, just calls the start method and this is where we're going to um, do all the chests. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a, an array of materials, which I'll call items. It's going to be equal to a new material array. And this is going to contain all of the possible items that could spawn into the chests. So we'll go ahead and put in a few items. We'll say um, apple uh, for food. Um, we'll say a wooden sword, wood sword for a little bit of offense. Um, We'll do a leather chest plate for a little bit of defense, and then we'll also do a bow and, of course, um, arrows. So these are all of the possible items that could show up in a chest. Now, if you wanted to make this more advanced, you could have a configuration where the user of the plugin could define uh, which items could possibly show up, but we're just going to hard code it like this because this is really just to show you an example of how it would work. And since we're going to be doing a bunch of um, work with random, we need to instantiate the java.util.random class. This is not associated with bucket. This is associated with Java. But we need to have that random so that we can uh, get a few random numbers. So now we're going to iterate over all of the chests in the array list of chests. So this is going to run for each of the chests that we have um, and then this is going to go about filling them. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to say int num items is equal to r dot next int, uh, and the bound is going to be five, and then we're going to say plus one. So 
So what this does is it generates a random number between 1 and 5. The next int method that takes in the bound returns a um, value between 0 and the value minus 1. So in this case, this part would return a number between 0 and 4, but then we go ahead and add 1. And this represents the number of items that will show up in the chest. We don't want to really have an empty chest, so it'll at least have one item, but at most it could have five items. Now we're going to say for int i is equal to 0, i is less than num items, i plus plus. So this loop will run through one time for each item, and this is where we go ahead and instantiate the item. We're going to say material material is equal to items at index r.nextInt items.length. And this is going to be a random material from the items array. So what we're doing is we're getting items at a given index, and that index is a random number between 0 and the length minus 1. So that's going to give us a random material from that array. So either apple, wood, sword, leather, chest plate, bow, and, or arrow. Now obviously there's no sort of um, probability system, so there's a 20% chance of getting each item. Now if you wanted to configure where you could um, have maybe an arrow be more likely than a bow, uh, or a leather chest plate be less likely than an apple, uh, if you wanted to have that kind of a probability system, that would be a little bit more advanced, and that would also require probably like a configuration or some kind of a wrapper class that has material and the probability or something like that. I'm not going to cover that. Uh, so for now, it's just 20% um, chance of each item. Then we're going to go ahead and say um, item stack item is equal to new item stack uh, material, and we're only going to give one. Now, in the case of apples and arrows, you could have more than one in a stack. You wouldn't really want that for a sword, a chest plate, um, or a bow, uh, but you could use a random number there. I'm not going to bother with that. Now, the next thing that we want to do um, is we're going to have the... Um, we want to add this to the chest, but if I just go ahead and add all the items right in a row, it'll be very easy to open up the chest and then just move your mouse down and grab everything out of there. So what we're going to do is we want to kind of spread out all of these different items so that they will appear in different slots. So one might appear in the middle, one might be in the top left, one might be, you know, in the bottom left, and they would be more or less scattered so that they're a little bit, you know, you're, you're, you have to move your mouse around to get them. So we're going to go ahead and use a loop. We're going to first make an in called index. Uh, and then that would represent the index where we're going to put the item. And then we're going to say, uh, we're going to make a do while loop. We're going to say do index is equal to r.nextInt. And the bound is going to be chest.getInventory.getSize. And then we're going to say while chest.getInventory.getItem at index is not equal to null. Then we're going to say item index item. So let's go ahead and let me quickly explain what we're doing here. So we're going so we want to get a random index in which to place the item. So in this do while loop, we set equal um, index equal to a random uh, number between 0 and the size minus 1. So this is going to be a random index. However, if the item at that index, if there is an item at that index, if the item is not equal to null, then we want to run through the loop again. And then finally we go ahead and set the item at the index. So for example, let's say um, that we run through this loop the first time and we set index equal to 10. That's the random number that's generated. Um, since this is the first time, there's obviously no item at 10. It is equal to null, uh, so then the loop finishes and we set item at 10. Let's say that for the next item, the next time this runs, um, the index, and this would obviously be in the same chest, so let's say that this loop right here were to run twice, and then the second time it runs, the index, it would generate the number 10 again. Now this is 
This is probably pretty rare that it would happen, but it could definitely happen. So if it generates the random number 10, and we call the set item method with 10, it would replace the old item with the new item. However, since the item at index 10 is not equal to null, the loop has to run again, and let's say this time it generates 11, or, you know, 0, or 23, None of those have an item, so any of them would work. So this is just to kind of scatter them throughout the inventory and make sure that we're not overwriting. And that's all that we need to do in order to fill in the chests. Again, this is a very simple implementation. Um, it has uniform probability. All the items have the same chance of happening um, or of being picked as the particular item to put into the chest. Um, and it's not configurable, but you could add configuration uh, for it, and you know there are a lot of ways you can make this more complicated or complex. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more survival games and coding in general. Bye for now.